Hey everybody, it's Kent with KG's Books. Tonight I am showing you some really cool books from my personal collection. Uh, some really cool stuff. It's all pretty unique. Uh, some of it's one of a kind. So first, I have a nice copy of The Modern Orlando. Let's see if I can get it to focus. Uh, nice leather binding on that one. Nothing too special about uh, the text. Um, it was published in 1846 in London. But it's a... Uh, four edge painting or it has a four edge painting so there you have George Washington you have Mount Vernon and then you have his tomb and then it's actually a double four edge painting so if you fan the pages the other way you'll see you got our main man Abe Lincoln uh, his home in Gentryville Indiana and then his tomb so again that is a double four edge painting very unique um, I guess one of a kind um, very cool. I like forage paintings. I only have, I don't know, maybe four or five of them in my collection. Um, these next two books came from um, the collection of Abel Berlin. Berlin. Um, he was a big time book collector in Chicago. Um, he was really influential in the book collecting world. And he actually, um, I think it was in 2001, he sold a first folio of Shakespeare at Christie's in New York and it brought over six million dollars so it was um a record set for Shakespeare book prices I guess so he was a pretty big deal in the book collecting world um I think a bunch of his grandkids ending up with some of the books so I think it was four or five years ago one of his I think it was one of his grandsons contacted me to buy a few boxes of books um and I kept two of them for myself. So I will show you this one. Pretty little binding on that one. It is uh, The Talking Animals by Louis Levenvaux. It is in French. It has 12 hand-colored illustrations. Uh, I absolutely love the illustrations in this book. Um, it was published in Paris in the 1850s, I believe. And I absolutely love the the illustrations in this book they're they're absolutely brilliant there you got a couple roosters fighting there you it looks like you got a couple mice begging for change from the rich peacock i think that's a peacock looks like a peacock wearing a very nice suit. Uh, there you have a cat feeding, I don't know if that's a little girl or a doll. I just really like the uh, anthropomorphic illustrations. I'll show you some of the other ones. I mean, they're all absolutely brilliant. Let's see, what do we got? Uh, kind of looks like some animals playing a leapfrog. You got a frog. You have a horse riding a little stick horse. Uh, you have a cat climbing a tree. It looks like there's a deer. I don't know what these two, um, the one jumping over the other, I'm not sure what, what exactly animals those are. Uh, here you got a fox. Oh, shoot, his foot's in a trap. And I mean, check out the detail. Isn't the detail actually absolutely crazy? It looks like he dropped a basket of fruit. And he's being chased by a gentleman and a dog. I mean, the detail in these illustrations, even like the lettering on the signs, is pretty crazy. Uh, looks like you have a monkey walking down a tightrope. And then check out all the, I mean... There's a swan, there's some chicks, there, it looks like a turkey. I mean, how many different kinds of birds are there down there? Watching the circus act. Oh, it looks like a poor little puppy and a mole, his, his wife, the mole. And I think there's 12, I hope I'm not missing any. You have a crow and an owl, the owl and his uh, 
military uniform with a sword. Couple more birds, I'm not sure exactly what they're doing. Looks like some birds climbing a tree, picking some cherries. Then I think there are, yeah, there are some other illustrations as well, but I think there's 12 hand colored ones. Um, next we have a book. It's been rebound at some point. Um, and there's a, there's the, uh, each of these have the book plate for Abel Berlin. Um, this one has two works by Sir Francis Bacon. Um, this one was printed in 1635. It's in English, so that's kind of nice. The use of the law provided for preservation of our persons, our goods, our good names, according to the practice of the laws and the customs of this land. And then the other work is the elements of the common laws of England, branched into a double tract, the one containing a collection of some principal rules and maxims of the common law with their latitude and extent, explicated for the more facile introduction of such are studiously addicted to that noble profession, the other on the use of the common law for preservation of our persons, goods, our names. Um, and again, by Sir Francis Bacon. Very cool. A couple early books on law. Look at that. The law doth not allow of grants except there to be a foundation of an interest in the grantor. For the law that will not accept of grants of titles or of things in action that are in perfect interest which less it will allow a man to grant or encumber that which is no interest at all, but merely future. Hmm. have no idea what that means, but very cool. Uh, this next one, check out this little leather, leather uh, carrying case of this one. Open it up for you. And again, I've never seen one quite like this, where the sides fold down. Um, we have the Book of Common Prayer. Um, let's see, that's a Book of Common Prayer and Hymns. Uh, this was published in 1872 in Oxford. And then the other one is Proper Lessons, which is basically prayers. And then this one also has um, the New Testament. I'm going to set that down so I can show you the bindings. I mean, absolutely beautiful bindings, and I love the carrying case that they come with. I can just imagine some old lady, 1870s, 1880s, carrying that to church. And obviously, it was her prized possession because, I mean, the condition's just fantastic. Uh, next, we have an emblemata from the 17th century. I don't know. Someone wrote 17 or 1672. I don't know if that's accurate. It is definitely from the 1600s. There's a portrait of the author. And this one is highly illustrated. I got to show you some of the illustrations. They are absolutely brilliant. I have no idea what's going on there. Check out that, a giant in a field with some tiny little cows. There's lots of really, really cool animal illustrations. You got the bears, little mama bear with her cub. That one is very mythological. A 
What is he doing? Trying to feed the snake with something in his mouth? I don't know. I guess it's hard for us to, to understand what was going on back then. Got the musician. Look at that. Looks like a bunch of animals chased a couple monkeys up the tree. Got a cute little owl in the tree. It looks like on the ground you have some sort of duck, some sort of dogs or wolves, and a deer. Amputation scene going on there. Very crude. Looks like you got a clock maker. I don't know what kind of technology they had, uh, you know, 350 years ago, as far as clocks. Oh, that one's kind of sad. Torturing the cat. Oh, poor little boy fell out of a tree. I guess this is some sort of book of fables. Oh, we got the alchemist. So yeah, very cool. Emblemata from the 17th century. Uh, next, one of my favorite things to collect is miniature books. So I have this little container full of miniature books. Got the Friendship's Jewel. Daily Food. I got a bunch of these Daily Food um, little prayer books. Daily Text, another little prayer book. We got the Fireside Angel. Um, I think to be considered a miniature book, it has to be less than three inches, which I think that one's about three inches. That one's about maybe about two inches. Uh, the Angel of the Fireside with illustrations. You got a little frontispiece of the ship at sea. That one is copyright 1865. Looks like it's just a little book of short stories. I thought there were some more illustrations. There we go. We have Prayer for Reformation. Still very cool to have a little miniature short storybook from 1860s oh looks like we have a little bible the bible in miniature for children look at the illustration of adam and eve the garden of eden uh that one's copyright 1835 and i think this one is has a bunch of illustrations yeah there's the crucifixion Not sure what that is. 
Some of the illustrations are a little crude. Looks like Moses. Baby Moses. And actually, this one has a cool little illustration. Or, um, inscription, not illustration. A present to Elijah Kellogg from his sister. His sister's name is cut off there, but uh, dated 1837. So that was a nice little gift for Elijah. Let's see, most of these are just prayer books. Pearls of Prayer. Dew drops. I got a bunch of these little, little dew drop prayer books. Mm, not sure what that one is. Carmletta or Going to Sing in Heaven. And that one doesn't have a date, but I would guess 1840s or 1850s. Pearls of Prayer. Again, most of the um, antique miniature books from that era were prayer books. Sometimes I, I think I might have a couple on like American history. Uh, I like these, these matching little buggers. Um, Tiny Books, Casket of Jewels, The Picnic, and Country Pets. Let's see, this one's a Bible. And again, you can usually find um, antique miniature Bibles. Uh, it is tough to find them in good condition. History of the Bible from 1850. And I think this one has a ton of illustrations. Then we got Daniel. In the court of Darius, a king of Persia, lived Daniel, a devout man and greatly favored to the king, which caused the nobles to envy him and to endeavor to destroy him. And they prevailed on the king to cast him into the lion's den. Very cool. Uh, crystal gems, wedding ring, vase of flowers, floral wreath, songs of flowers. I don't know what those are if they're just little poem books it looks like. Songs of Flowers with Their Languages by Fanny Frisbee. Copyright 1855. Yeah, it looks like a just a little book of quotes and poems. Lily of the Valley. Don't know if that one has any illustrations. Doesn't look like it. Gems, again, just a little poem or short story book. I like this one, the boys' own textbook, just a little uh, religious book for boys. Again, that one's about three inches tall. The boys' own textbook containing a text from the Old and New Testaments for every morning and evening of the year. Published in 1857. And there's a nice little cool little illustration. Looks like jo Joseph from his affectionate sister. 1869. And there's a little quote that I can't read. See, looks like we got a little set of these. St. Mark, St. Matthew, St. John, and St. Luke. I definitely have to track down the rest of those at some point, but might be a little tough. Got the offering. A Child's Life of George Washington. 
with 10 illustrations, copyright 1860. Got Mount Vernon, Washington in the field, the source, the Washington family, Washington at prayer at Valley Forge, very cool. So we got some more matching ones. These would have been from a series. Um, we have Quadrupeds of America, Forest Scenes, The Book of Sports, and don't know what that last one says. I guess we'll just have to open it up. Uh, Book of the Nations, Costume and Customs of Foreign Countries. There you got an illustration of the Chinese. No date, but I would guess those are 1860s, maybe. Maybe 1850s. Uh, an English lady of the 15th century. Got the Anglo-Saxon blowing his horn. Got a New Zealand family. Uh, Chinese Mandarin and ladies. Very cool. I want to see... Check out the book of sports. See what they have listed. Games with marbles, tops, cricket, archery, skating, playing with dolls, keeping rabbits, raising flowers, keeping doves, prisoners base, reading picture books, studying insects, gymnastics, football, vaulting, swimming, diving. See if they have any illustrations of football. Page 132. There's gymnastics. Yep, there we go. We got football. To play this game, uh, let a match be made of equal numbers. A large ball made of sewn rags in the corner, in a corner, in a cover and bladder is used, which is thrown up and lights between the two parties. The object of each, which is to kick the ball beyond the goal of the other and to prevent it of passing of their own. Okay, so that's a description of soccer. Football is fallen in very, football is fallen very much in disrepute and is not allowed in many of the playgrounds and schools of cities. It is also a very dangerous game as a boy may have his leg broken or receive a kick, which may disable him for years. Wow. Interesting. Got the peep show. Walking with stilts. Magnetic amusement. Looks like a cool little magic trick. Oh, the blowgun. The blowgun, or as it is somewhat, sometimes called, the pea shooter, is very simple. The hoop. Archery. Whoop. The game is called as follows. All the players except one collect at a place previously fixed or called their home. They hide their eyes while one goes off to hide himself. When the one who's hidden himself is secret, secreted and ready, he shoots. He shouts, a whoop -o. The others then take different directions to go and find him. Okay. Very cool. Leapfrog, classic. Oops. Very cool. Let's see. Looks like another tiny little Bible. History of the Bible from 1869. What do we got? We got Moses receiving the Ten Commandments. And again, I think this one is nicely illustrated. You got Ahab. Got Micah. Aaron. Job. Abraham. Very cool. What year was that one? 
1869. Marbled uh, page edges on that one too. Oh, I'm not sure exactly what this one is. Gonna have to open it up to see. Oh, it's upside down. Uh, Heroes of the War. Hmm. Not sure what war exactly that is. That one is from 1830. Assuming it was some foreign war. Not U.S. related. There we got Russians. Hmm. Not sure about that one. Day Dawn. Another little dew drops. Little folks. And that one is tiny. I don't know. That's probably about an inch and a half tall. It is absolutely tiny. Uh, Talk with Little Folks, published in 1863. And again, like, that's my thumb. That's the book. Uh, another copy of Dewdrops. And now this one, this is one of my favorite little miniature books. Again, it's like an inch tall, and it has this cute little leather case. Yep. Pull it out like that. And it, I mean, it's it's hard to convey how tiny this bugger is, but it is small. And the, there's the title, Small Rain Upon the Tender Herb, third edition. I think this is, oh, I suppose it'd help if I get the title page in the camera. Um, this one's from the 1830s. And again, it's just a, another book of Bible verses. And again, it's tiny, tiny, tiny. And again, have a tiny little miniature book from the 1830s. How did that not get lost uh, over the last 190 years? And again, comes with the original little leather case. You can find these on eBay. Um, I think to get a nice one, it might cost 75 to 100 Um I'm always browsing eBay, so I'm sure I got a good deal on it, hopefully. Um, so yeah, so that's my miniature book collection. Uh, and I saved these three for last because they are they could be offensive to some people. Um, these are from the African Hunting Reprint series. Uh, the books themselves were published in the 1980s and 1990s. Um, and they have a very unique binding. This is Elephant Hide. Um, I talked to some people that do book binding. Um, and I guess you can get Elephant Hide or e Elephant Leather, whatever you want to call it, from, um, exotic leather and hide dealers in the U.S. It's completely legal. Um, I've never seen it before. Um, some people, I guess, might be grossed out at it, um, though they wouldn't be grossed out by any other kind of leather. Um, obviously, they're not raising elephants for leather, but when they sell prod products from elephant, it does help in the conservation of animals over in Africa. So pretty cool, pretty unique. Um, I don't know. I don't. It's not something you can you can find online. Um, books bound in elephant hide, but it occasionally, I guess, comes up for sale. So yeah, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it.